Hello, we're going to begin our work on data visualization today for scientific computing. In particular, we're going to be looking at how to use the pandas and plot nine uh, libraries and modules to start visualizing a bunch of data that we're going to be having. Many, many files of data. We're going to be able to look at them, see what's going on, do some explorations and some drawing of some great graphs. So this summer, my family and I, we decided to record the birds that we were seeing in our backyard. We set up a bird feeder every day, once or twice a day. We would look out there, maybe eating lunch or dinner, and see what kind of birds we found. So we did this from the 17th of May until the 18th of June. So we've got a month of data that we were able to collect with this app called Bird Journal. So I can do it on my phone. It shows up here and it talks about the types of birds, exactly where they were, and what's going on. So this information, you can export it, and I exported it and cleaned it up a bit and turned it into a .csv file. CSV is for comma separated values. So the first line of this file talks about the different columns that we'll be seeing, and after that, we have data data, data. We have 185 data points in this data set talking about what time, what observation was it, what the name of the bird was, the genus and species of the bird, how many of those birds I see, and the date and the time. This is our data. So let's see how we can load this up in Python and get going on creating some visualizations. There's two questions I want to answer about this data. I want to sort of see a graph of how many birds did I see each day over time? And the second one I want to say, let's do a column graph. How many species, or how much of each species was I seeing over this whole time period? And what was the most frequent bird? What was the least frequent bird in a nice, easy visualization? Those are my goals today. So let's go create a new notebook to start doing this. <clears throat> okay. Logrish um, bird data. That sounds good. So let's start off with the pieces we need. We want to be able to draw the figures that we're making right here inside our notebook. And we are going to import pandas as pd. This is the traditional way of importing the pandas library. And then from plot 9, we're going to import everything. Get rid of the plot nine name and just be able to use all of the things in that module. Okay, so to get us going here, we're going to make what's called a data frame. And we're going to do that really easily with pandas by looking at the goad rich summer bird journal 2020 CSV file. Let's load that up. Quick and easy, Pandas takes care of that for us, and it makes what's called a data frame. Now the data frame has all of our data inside it in an easily accessible way through programming. We can visualize it right here if we're just doing stuff in the notebook. It's like, hey, here's a piece of it. Here's the top, here's the head, here's the tail, 185 rows and seven columns. But I want to get that information out. I can say, what are the columns? And I could say, bird uh, data frame dot columns. These are the columns, and they're nice. I could actually iterate through them if I wanted to for C in columns, print C. So I could use these Python tools to talk to this data frame object. Let me get that back the way it was. And then I could say, well, what if I want to talk to a particular column? I can talk to that through the bracket notation. And this is all the things in the name column. This is their index of where they are, and I could iterate through that as well. I could ask for a particular row, and this tells me that first observation that is listed inside our data frame. So I've been able to get name, I've been able to get a row. I can get the names of the columns themselves. 
I can figure out the data types of what's going on and know that when it loaded it up, it recognized that some things were integers and some things were just general objects. So let's try to plot things up. The way we're going to do it is with plot9's uh, plotting command called ggplot. It's a very common plotting technique uh, coming from R, another kind of data analytics language. And this is the translation people have made into Python for us. And so GG stands for Grammar of Graphics. And it says if you're going to draw something, it's made up of these different layers that you're going to assemble as you make your picture. So you can easily think, what's my data? What are my axes? What is the scale of the axes? How is it going to look? Do I have any statistics I'm going to put on top of that data? Drawing some regression lines. Are there different facets or different pieces that I want to split out? What is my coordinate system that I'm using? It's sort of in these different layers. And so let's, let's start doing that with this data here. So I'm going to plot my data frame. And then I'm going to say my aesthetics. The X is going to be the date. And the Y is going to be the count. In doing so, I've created a two-dimensional plot here, but it has no visualization. It has no geometry. We've got our data. That's how it knew there were x's and y's for date and count. But I want to be able to say, I want to let's draw a line on there. <clears throat> now, this line is is not really what we want. We want what we want some lines over time, showing us what was happening. We also are having some troubles with the line at the bottom here. It's really hard to see what's going on there. And so we could fix that up by rotating and adding a theme with the axis text x equal to element text rotation. Let's make that 90 degrees. OK. so. Here's our graph that we've been able to create, thinking of the data, the aesthetics, the geometry, and then some extra elements to fiddle things at the end. Splitting it up into these pieces can help us think about them individually. Well, what we're seeing here is the date doesn't really look like linear from left to right. It looks like it's just individual dates, and we're drawing our lines across those individual dates we need to fix that because date really shouldn't be a general object. We want to make it a date time. So let's go ahead and fix that up here. I'm going to say let's make date equal to pandas convert it into a date time object. Now if we look at the data types we can see that the data type of date is date time 64. It's going to hold data, and when we draw it, it's going to look a little bit better. It's going to actually be able to draw a line from left to right and connect things on this axis down here. The x-axis is not categorical anymore. It is linear in terms of numbers going from smallest to largest. Now that helps us, but doesn't really show us what we want. <laughs> so, well, one more thing before we go on and try to get what we want. We can add in a third dimension here for color. We can do the name. And that's going to let us individually put in different lines. How many of these particular birds did I see across these different days? Did I see lots of them? Did I see a few of them? And then each one can get its own line. We split out over here. Last thing we want to do. Let's add in some labels. This is always helpful to do title of our graph, birds seen in Dr. Gogrich's backyard, the x-axis, we're going to have it equal something nice, capital date, the y-axis is going to be bird count, and the color axis is going to be species common name. Ooh, I forgot a comma, and we're all set. So by being a little bit more specific here and adding the labels, 
then this is a graph that we might be able to share with somebody else instead of it just being a small demo that we're making here in our own program. We could actually export this and say, these are the birds that I saw and when I saw them over the summer. <clears throat> okay, the frustrating thing about making my graph is these are split up into individual observations and birds. I need to do some data aggregation to sort of bring things together. How many birds did I see on the 15th of June? It's split up across the observations. So let's take those and put those together in a sensible way. So what I could do here, I could say, hey, data frame, let's look at these two columns, date and count. That's what I want to keep. Now notice I could just make a data frame and keep those two columns. But before I do so, I want to group them by date. And that's a group by kind of object, but it doesn't really mean anything unless you do some kind of aggregation on it. Once we do the aggregation and add in sum here, now we start to see date and count. It glued them and stuck them together. Now we don't want date to be an index over here. I still want it to be different. So I'm gonna say as index equals false. And I'm gonna get it back to have an actual index with my date and my count as two different columns over here. Okay, this is gonna be a handy chart because now I can go through from my dates on an axis, my counts on the other axis, and actually be able to plot those points. So let's go ahead and save this as a new data frame. Let's give it a name. Let's call it like the date count data frame. And then we're gonna do this again. What we're doing up here, let's copy this down we don't have a name for them anymore. So we can get rid of that piece. But everything else, date count is our data frame. We still have date and count in there. We go and draw a line, rotate the text 90 degrees, all of that stuff, and we get this graph. Here's the title, here are the labels, here's what's going on, and by aggregating it together, we can actually start to see how many birds I saw each day. Now it looks like we saw a lot of birds on this day. I think we recorded three times that day, and we might have just recorded once that day. So these are the dates we have, and because they're linear, they can be back together there. Because we're aggregating, we have another y-axis over there. Okay, so this sort of solves my first problem. Can I see how many birds were there each day when I recorded them in the backyard? Okay. Second thing I want to do is start to look at these names. I want to know how many of each bird did I see. And I'm going to do another kind of aggregation to get there. But instead of by date, what if I aggregated it by name? And I like to just look at the data frames first before I save them so I know what I'm doing. Here we go. So. I substituted name for date there, and the aggregation was put together to say I saw seven American crows, 24 black cap chickadees, 12 blue jays, my favorite one to see in the backyard, two brown headed cowbirds. So that's what we have, and now we can draw another graph with that data. Okay, so we have to save it here. I'm going to save it as the name counts. Let's change this to name count. We have the name and the count and the date. We're going to make that name down here. Common name and then bird count. And let's see what happens here. It did not like it because each group has only one observation. There's no way to draw lines. We didn't really want to draw a line. This is a graph we want to draw, a column chart. So all we have to do up here is change the geometry of what we're doing to a column. And it says, oh, okay, my x-axis looks like this. Our y-axis is the count. And we can easily try to visualize 
the data frame that we were seeing in terms of a column graph. Now, northern cardinal, the most frequent bird we see in our backyard is the cardinal. The least frequent is the mockingbird and the turkey vulture. Can I easily show somebody those answers instead of them having to themselves figure out this is the smallest, this is the biggest? I'd like to order them from left to right. Now I could try to do that by sorting things up here. I can keep on writing up here. And I can sort my data here. Sort values. I'm going to sort it by the count that I get back. And I'm going to do ascending equals false. I want it to be the biggest ones at the top. Oh, before we do that, let's just look at it here. That looks like a better data frame. Count goes down. I've got the names here. Let's save that again. And then my data frame and try to plot it. Plotting didn't change. It is still alphabetical order from left to right. American Crow down to Yellow Warbler. Now that's a little frustrating. We might think the data frame would control how things are drawn, but Plot9 says, I'm going to try to do things in a sensible way. Most of the time, people want categorical information alphabetically. So I am going to display left to right alphabetically. If you want it a different way, you have to be more in control of your data frame. So here's what we can do. We can say, hey, name count. Remember that name column? Just like we reset up above to say that the date needed to be a date time object, we're going to make this a categorical object that tells it these are the order of the things that I want. Categorical means I'm putting these in a certain order. It usually intuits that you want alphabetical, but if you don't, you have to be explicit. So let's make categorical based on name count. But what are the categories going to be? What is their order? It is going to be based on equals name count name. And then I want to say to list on that. Because this is still an object when it gets it back. Name count name. Categories has to be a list. But if I do it in this sort, I needed to sort it. And if I do it in that sorted way, then let's see what happens. Now when I draw them, it says, you don't want it alphabetical. You want it in the categorical way you told me. And so the first one is going to be the first one in that list, Northern Cardinal, and then Tufted Titmouse, and then Black Cap Chickadee, House Sparrow, Red Winged Blackbird, etc all the way down to the Mockingbird and Turkey Vulture on the right. This is an easier way for people to see what was going on there. So this is the graph, that second graph that I was going for. How can I easily see how many of each type of bird that I saw? This is how do I see how many of each, how many birds that I see per day? So thinking about the dimensions, thinking about what my data frame looks like, I did some transformations on it to get it to be in a way that I can easily plot things together, x, y axis, add some labels, and get the charts I want. Okay.